Okay, this is me, Plum GMK. If you're here, you probably already know who I am. I make gaming videos, and if you've heard my voice before, you've probably heard some of my political videos. Now, I'm here today to talk to you about another subject which interests me, physics. Specifically, I'm talking about the subatomic particles that make up everything we encounter in our daily lives, and quite a few things that we don't. The first particle I'm going to talk about is the neutron. It is rather important to us. It is responsible for keeping the positively charged protons together in atomic nuclei. Without it, matter as we know it would not exist. The neutron isn't just a simple particle, though. It is composed of three smaller particles called quarks. There are different types of quarks. In the neutron, there are two downs and one up. The downs each have a charge of minus one third and the up is a charge of plus two thirds, making a total of zero. This type of composite particle in which there are three quarks is known as a baryon. The three quarks are held together by a force known as the strong interaction. Each carries a charge pertaining to this because there are three it was seen fit to call them after the three primary colors, red, green, and blue. Therefore, this charge is known as the color charge. To maintain this binding force, the quarks constantly exchange particles known as gluons. These gluons are said to be virtual because as soon as they start existing, they almost immediately stop existing, either by interacting with another quark or by decaying. Each gluon has both a color and an anti-color, which means that they are able to change the colors of quarks with which they interact, but always keep the overall baryon colorless. When representing anti-colors in a diagram, it is common practice to simply invert the ordinary color, and this video is no exception. Therefore, anti-red is cyan, anti-green is magenta, and anti-blue is yellow. Please note that as all this takes place on a quantum scale, it is impossible to determine what colors and anti-colors are actually involved in any particular interaction, or even when any interaction will occur. I'm just putting in certain possibilities here. Despite its importance in keeping atomic nuclei together, on its own, the neutron is actually quite unstable. After an average of about 15 minutes, the neutron will transform into a proton by a process known as beta decay, or more specifically, beta minus decay. This occurs due to another force known as the weak interaction. One of the down quarks in the neutron emits another particle known as a negative weak boson, which uh, immediately decays into an electron and an electron antineutrino. The down quark is transformed into an up quark, therefore transforming the neutron into a proton. Before I go any further, let me give a brief explanation of what antimatter is. An antimatter particle is the same as its ordinary matter counterpart, except completely reversed. Electric charge, color, anything else you can think of, it's inverted. Some scientists speculate that antimatter is actually ordinary matter uh, traveling in the opposite direction in time, something which makes sense to me, to be honest, uh, especially considering how the weak interaction doesn't seem to be any sort of interaction per se, just a boson decaying into an antiparticle and a particle. Perhaps the interaction is occurring uh, with time changing direction in terms of one of the particles. So anyway, here we have a proton. Again, it is composed of three quarks, but this time the quarks are two ups and a down. They are held together in the same manner as the quarks in the neutron. This is a stable particle with a mass ever so slightly smaller than that of the neutron. The thing is, though, apart from these three so-called valence quarks and the gluons that they exchange, there is also a sea of quarks, anti-quarks, and gluons swimming around the outside. Uh, this is caused by gluons that fail to interact and so decay into a quark and an anti-quark. But because this happens on a quantum scale, as I said, 
It is impossible to predict when any of this will happen, so I just omitted it for clarity. Now, suppose that two protons were to be forced very close together. This happens very rarely here on Earth because of the electromagnetic repulsion between them, but it is quite common in high-pressure environments such as the Sun. This is where the nuclear force comes into play. One of the C antiquarks teams up with one of the valence quarks with the equivalent color and leaves the proton becoming a neutral particle known as the pion. This goes off and joins another proton, keeping these two colorless particles together in an arrangement known as a diproton. However, as strong as this nuclear force is, it is not enough to overcome the electric charge permanently, so one of two things can happen. In most cases, the two protons just fly apart again. However, in some cases, the weak interaction may kick in and cause a, a process known as beta plus decay. One of the up quarks in one of the protons turns into a down quark and emits a positive weak boson. This then decays into a, an electron neutrino and an anti-electron or positron. Thus, one of the protons is transformed into a neutron and the whole setup becomes a stable particle known as a deuteron. This is a nucleus of deuterium, which is the second isotope of hydrogen. In this case, the neutron is completely stable. Even though on its own it is unstable, in this case it is bonded to a proton, so if it were to turn into a proton itself, the whole setup would fall apart because of the electromagnetic repulsion. So anyway, that's about it. Soon I intend to make a video on the radioactive triton, and if I ever come up with any more political outrage, I'll be sure to give you a speech on it. Until then, goodbye.